Henry Kissinger once said that a diamond is a lump of coal that has done well under pressure. Welcome, friends, to a special preaching series for this season of Lent called Dust to Diamonds. Let's go. So if you're new to this channel, you are most welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. And there is one rule of this podcast. Do you know what that rule is? Well, to both imitate and paraphrase Mark Dolan of GB News, the one rule of this program is that we don't serve or drink decaf coffee. Not on my watch. I just won't have it. So there you go. A simple rule for very simple people. So we start the season of Lent by having dust or ashes placed on our forehead, which itself was an act of humility. We're left wondering until we saw what we look like in the mirror, how big a cross we had placed on our forehead. But it was only the beginning and it doesn't end there. We allow ourselves by God's grace with our cooperation through this season of Lent in our prayers, our fastings, our almsgiving, in letting the Lord take something that is and making it into something else. The Lord is capable of taking dust and forming them into diamonds. Diamonds, I'll get to that in a minute, but the formation of how they're created in the depths of the earth and then brought either closer to the surface or upon the surface of the earth. But we see the, this essence of formation in the first reading we have today from the book of Genesis. Scripture says that God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. So this formation, this pressure that the Lord in taking the dust together, it forms and brings about life. God's pressure brings about union with himself. Now you contrast this to the formation or the pressure of the evil one. The same reading we have today from Genesis reminds us that the evil one or the serpent was the craftiest of all the wild animals on the earth. And we see in this interplay between him and Eve, how the pressure of the evil one causes her to be isolated and ultimately with Adam live in disobedience and in separation from God. So the question is, will I allow myself to be put under the pressure of the evil one, the world, the flesh, the devil, or will I willingly cooperate with the Lord, again in this season of Lent, whose pressure brings me into closer union with himself. When we saw the, the graphic of this uh, preaching series, Dust to Diamonds, what did we notice first? Did we notice the dirty fingernails, the dirty hands, uh, the lumps of coal in the hands of the miner? Or did we first of all notice the big rock? Let's get honest. What do we notice first? I bet most of us notice that big diamond in the midst of those pieces of coal. The diamond at one time being just like those lumps of coal, but has done well, as Henry Kissinger says, under pressure. We can't have the latter without the former. And God, as I said in the earlier episode of this Sipping on the Sabbath podcast, he's not afraid to get his hands dirty in forming us and working with our cooperation to form us into a great diamond through all the ordinary circumstances of our life. Now, diamonds are made, as I said, from carbon, the chemical element fundamental to life, uh, that changes under very intense pressure and heat. And the pressure that the carbon is under is akin to having 4,000 grown men standing on our foot. That would hurt, no doubt. And the, the heat or the temperature that the carbon is under in this process of being formed into a diamond is about 1,500 degrees Celsius or 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. 
that's uh, that's pretty hot. Yep, yeah, that's pretty hot. But combined with the heat and the pressure, we have the, the silence, we have the darkness. This process happens about 200 kilometers below the surface of the Earth. And diamonds are formed in clusters. It's a very important principle. I'm going to put that over here on the side for a future episode we'll talk about. They're formed in clusters surrounded or stuck in what's called kimber light that flows again closer to the surface of the earth or onto the surface of the earth in deposits due to volcanic eruptions. Now, I'm Father Alan McDonald. I'm not Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> so what does this got to do with us? Is there a practical application, Father Alan, to my life? And the answer, of course, is yes. But first, we need some more coffee. I came across a song by the band Hawk Nelson called Diamonds. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. It's pretty catchy. Just Google it, look it up. It's very nice. And here are the words, or I guess what they call the lyrics, uh, to the song. I'm going to spare you the, the embarrassment of having to listen to me sing it. I'm just going to say it. So here, here are the words to the song Diamonds by the band Hawk Nelson. As a practical application of what we're trying to get at here. Here and now, I'm in the fire, in above my head, being held under the pressure, don't know what will be left, but it's here in the ashes I'm finding treasure. He's making diamonds, making diamonds, he's making diamonds out of dust. He is refining in his timing, he's making diamonds out of us. I'll surrender to the power of being crushed by love. So the beauty that was hidden isn't covered up. It's not what I hope for. It's something much better. Oh, the joy of the Lord will be my strength. When the pressure is on, he's making diamonds. I won't be afraid to shine because he's making diamonds out of dust. He's making diamonds out of us. Pretty cool, eh? Check it out. Diamonds. Hawk Nelson. Jesus, the, the essence of the song, uh, redeems us. That's what the song is all about. He redeems us. He uses the, the circumstances of life, especially the difficult ones, for our good. And pressure and heat can actually turn an ordinary lump of coal into a beautiful, timeless creation. And as always, Jesus leads the way. In the gospel today we have from Matthew, he literally allows himself to be led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The dust, the, the heat, the pressure, the solitude, the darkness, to undergo the classic three temptations that Archbishop Fulton Sheen summarizes as being shortcuts from the cross. All the glory, but none of the work. That's ultimately the temptation. And we see something akin earlier, again, in the reading we have from Genesis, the conversation between Satan and Eve. What's the hook that he tries to get into her to have her live in disobedience to the will of God? You will be like God. Yeah. I want to be like God. Yeah, come on, give me some of that God stuff. You know, I don't want to have to live my life in obedience. I want to do my own thing. I want to be God, which ultimately, if you boil it all down, is probably the cause of most of our temptations. I want to be in charge. I want to run the show. I don't want to live like this. So, the desert that Jesus enters into, again, leading by example, and the 40 days of Lent parallel the 40 days he spent in the desert, is the place where the spiritual battle must be fought. We, of course, value the diamond. God values the dust. Do we? Will I value the dust of my life, particularly in this season of Lent, understanding that God is quite capable of taking something that is and making it into something else. 
You've heard me say a couple of different spiritual axioms in the course of all these different uh, podcasts that I've put together, including there is no growth in the spiritual life apart from the cross. Pain is the touchdown of growth in the spiritual life. Don't go looking for the cross. It will find us. But there's another one here today that I encourage us to remember, repeat, say to ourselves often. And it's the words of God, our Heavenly Father, to Jesus when he was baptized. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. Make that personal. You are my beloved daughter. With you I am well pleased. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. And I want to root myself in that truth. As we're journeying through this season of Lent, it's an opportunity for us to practice saying that to ourselves often. The essence of the temptations that we have in today's gospel of Satan towards Jesus was for him and us to doubt his identity, to doubt our identity. What does Satan say to Jesus? If you are the Son of God. You know what? If you were really the Son of God, you wouldn't be experiencing any dust or heat or pressure or the darkness or the solitude or the difficulties of life. You're not the Son of God. You know what? God doesn't even exist. God's forgotten you. God has abandoned you. God doesn't hear your prayers. God doesn't love you. If you are the Son of God, if you are a beloved daughter of God, these things wouldn't be happening to you. But the truth of the matter is, we are very much the beloved daughters and sons of God, and he is very much pleased with us. There's nothing that you and I can do that would stop God from loving us. We can't do anything to make him love us more. We want to give ourselves in total cooperation to this process. God is taking something that is and making it into something else. God is taking the dust of our life and all that involves, all the disappointments, the setbacks, the frustrations, the anxieties, the fears, the worries, all of that. And when we turn it over to him, he is able to transform us and form us under his pressure and his heat, which is love, into a beautiful, timeless creation, a diamond. What does St. Paul say to us today in the second reading? One man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life. By one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. And of course, Paul is talking about Jesus. And so today I want to teach you and remind myself of a four-step dynamic to move from the lies of the evil one to live under and in the truth of Jesus. Call these the four R.E.s. A special uh, thank you to Mark Moreau, who recently gave a talk at a men's retreat I was on, and these really uh, struck my heart and so, and so I want to share them again with you and remind myself of them. So a little thumbs up there, Mark, for your efforts there and your, your work to really encourage us to live in the truth of who we are, beloved sons and beloved daughters of God our Father. And so the four R.E.s are repent, renounce, receive, and reclaim. So first of all, we want to repent. I want to repent, and I'll lead us in a prayer in a moment, but I want to repent of taking on any false images, any false ideas about myself, or even about God our Father, and what we think he is, rather than allowing him to speak his truth of who he is uh, into our hearts. Then I want to renounce In the name of Jesus, of course, renounce any way in which the evil one has entered in, any way in which the evil one has sown seeds of doubt 
or confusion or suspicion or despair or self-hatred into our life because of these false images, these false ideas that we have come to believe about ourselves or believe about God himself as well. And then I receive. I ask Jesus. I ask Jesus to pull these false plants, these false notions by the root right out of my heart, right out of my mind, right out of my memory, and instead plant the, the seeds of his truth in those places that were once occupied by falsehoods, once occupied by lies. And you know, even if I don't fully understand where these weeds, as it were, came from, if I have the willingness to give the Lord permission to pull them out, to root me of any of these things, then the Lord will begin to work. It's asking him to do, giving him permission to do what he desires in our life, because ultimately he wants to bring us to a place of freedom. And then finally, I reclaim, I reclaim, I declare my true identity as a beloved son, as a beloved daughter in my father's love. That's the process by which we can cooperate with the Lord through all the circumstances of our life, because life comes our way. So many things in life well, we're powerless, right? We're totally, completely powerless over people, places, and things. We give the Lord permission. We surrender ourselves to the Lord. Jesus, I want you to live in the very center of my life, in the center of my heart. So, let's go through these four REs, this four-step process of renouncing any way in which we're living under the lie and desire to live under the canopy of God's truth. So let us pray. So Lord Jesus, we thank you, first of all, for the gift of this day. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of each person who is a part of this Sipping on the Sabbath family, Lord, that you are and have been raising up in our midst. We come before you, Jesus, just as we are, in all the circumstances of our life, Lord, all the dust, all the pressure, all the heat, all the solitude, all the silence, you know, Lord Jesus, what's going on in our life. I want to pray especially, Lord, for anyone today living under a particularly heavy burden in their life, emotional, physical, spiritual, psychological, that you would right now, Jesus, speak gently to their heart, remind them of your love, remind them of the gift of your mercy and your peace. And so first of all, Lord Jesus, we want to repent. We want to repent, Lord, of any way in which we have been taking on false images about ourself and about you, Lord. Any way, Lord Jesus, in which we have been acquiescing, saying yes, to the lies of the evil one. And we, Jesus, in your name, right now, renounce all these lies and any associated spirits that have entered into our life as a result of these lies. In your name, Lord Jesus, we renounce them and we command them, Jesus, in your name to leave us right now. All the evil spirits, in the name of Jesus, you have no right to be here. You have no claim on our life. And in the name of Jesus, we command you to be gone. And Jesus, we right now want to receive from you the seeds of your truth. Where once, Lord Jesus, there was the the weeds of lies and doubt and confusion and despair and hopelessness in our life, we instead, Lord Jesus, ask you to scatter the seeds in our heart of your peace, of your hope, of your love, of your mercy, of the truth, Lord Jesus, of who we are. 
And finally, Lord Jesus, we reclaim, we reclaim in your name our true identity that we are indeed, each of us, your beloved sons, your beloved daughters. And help us, Lord Jesus, to live in the truth that we are indeed pleasing in your sight. You are overwhelmingly in love with us, Jesus. Our identity comes from you. No one else, Lord, tells us who we are. You tell us who we are. And we want to listen to your voice. Mother Mary and St. Joseph and our guardian angels and patron saints, please pray for us that in this season of Lent, we may understand and accept that Jesus is at work. It is taking the dust of our life, all the circumstances of our life, and he is forming them in the heat and in the pressure of his love and his mercy into precious diamonds. Continue, Lord Jesus, your work of purification and reform in each of our lives. Help us keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus. Help us again, Jesus, to live in the truth of who we are, precious diamonds in your sight. Amen. Okay, well, there you go. God bless you there. That's episode one as we're journeying through this uh, season of Lent, Dust to Diamonds. Don't forget, if you're new, please subscribe. Please share this with your friends, your relatives, your in-laws, your outlaws, <laughs> on all your social media platforms. Give it a like. Send me a comment, your prayer requests. Know that I am indeed praying for you and your charity. Please pray for me. In the meantime, stay caffeinated. <laughs> and remember, when we're powerless, that's when we're strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. And may Almighty God bless you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye-bye.